Hi everyone and welcome back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock and we're here on location at the Oliver Wyman Health Innovation Summit. I have another distinguished guest joining us here. This is Maureen O'Connor. Maureen, welcome to the interview. Thank you, Kate. Maureen, happy we're happy to be here. We're happy to have you. Uh, Maureen, you are the president of Mosaic Health Solutions. Let's get into your questions. Sure. I don't know if you have heard of Ingrid Lindberg. Uh, Ingrid spoke uh, at AHIP this year. Mm -hmm. She made a quote that made me think of you. Um, Ingrid Lindbergh has said that the health industry has to nail the basics before it can delight the customer. How have you managed to ensure that Mosaic is positioned to do both for its stakeholders? So I would begin by saying I totally agree with Ingrid. I do think we have to nail the basics. Um, and maybe begin by saying for healthcare, as opposed to some other industries, I think the basics are incredibly important and I don't think we are there yet in even being getting close right. to nailing it yeah. and getting it right. So for me, I would define the basics as delivering quality care to people, um, certainly providing the access that they need to really good quality options, and then affordability. And again, I think we have challenges on all of those fronts. So I totally, I'm in complete alignment that we need to nail the basics. I think Mosaic uh, Health Solutions, which is the strategic investment arm of Blue Cross Blue Shield North Carolina, you know, it's not as if the health plan is all focused on nailing the basics while we are out innovating in these amazing new solutions. We're actually looking for solutions that can help us um, get the basics right. right. And um, so, you know, we're doing that by uh, investing in companies that, for example, can keep people out of the emergency room or can help people as they're trying to manage, um, you know, sort of high, high cost drugs for people with, with chronic conditions, telemedicine. So we've got a, a whole suite of, of solutions. What I will say um, is that we are very much focused on the future and sort of where healthcare is going and where it needs to go and not investing in companies that are gonna perpetuate the status quo even if they're profitable. So we're, you know, honestly, we're in this business both to, um, to make money, so we're, it's a for-profit part mm -hmm. of the organization, mm -hmm. so we're looking for that return on capital, right. um, but it's incredibly strategic what we're doing. And so we want to really focus on those opportunities that are going to change healthcare for the better and really drive uh, the kind of change and the pace of change uh, that we need. You know, uh, on the issue of delight, um, that's a word that's used a lot right now. Um, again, I think, unfortunately, the bar is fairly low in healthcare. So if you think about a consumer experience of, you know, just this week, um, I tend to order, I'm an Amazon Prime member, um, and I have certain expectations of what that's gonna feel like. So I can do it in the moment, I can do it quickly, I get what I want, I can look at reviews mm -hmm. for what, you know, what has been uh, a great experience for someone else, and then complete the transaction in seconds. In healthcare, if I want to schedule an appointment online, for example, around my own convenience, um, the likelihood of me being able to do that is actually pretty low right now. Mm -hmm. If that exists, and it does in some markets, that's viewed as a big deal. So the whole notion of delighting, it's, it's actually sort of a different bar. Um, which means we have a we have a ton of opportunity, right? You know, it, it, it makes me think, uh, Maureen, of how Terry Stone here at the summit opened this morning and uh, with several patient testimonials and, and just how far we have to go yeah. in, in getting, like you said, in, in getting to that delight point when, when the basics are, are so infrequently met. So, that's right, um, yeah. that's right. So good for you for having that strategy of looking at those companies that can help really get those basics, basics right and then build from there. Yeah. My next question for you, Maureen. Why is it important to Mosaic that not just consumers, but providers and payers all benefit from your collaboration and investment opportunities? Yeah, so I, again, I think if you start with the consumer at the middle, uh, at the center, and say, how does a consumer, you're a consumer, I'm a consumer, how do we think about healthcare? We don't put it in these silos where we're saying, well, what's the payer experience? What's the provider experience? What's the retail pharmacy experience? It's just their health care, it's their life, and they're expecting those um, stakeholders, if you will, to, to work together, 
to sort of figure it out. And, um, and so we talk about navigating the system and how complex it is, but I think there's a huge opportunity to really start thinking about healthcare very differently. So, and that is across all of these uh, various stakeholders. And so when we think about investing, we do think about it that way. Um, if we can, if, if we can find a solution that's very helpful to payers, that's great. But boy, if it helps providers as well, and if it helps the consumer in the mix, that's sort of the triple play that right. we're always looking for. Right. Maybe give you an example. Um, so a health plan may have a goal, and this is not a crazy one. Most health plans do today, uh, particularly with the Affordable Care Act, of trying to reduce emergency room utilization. Um, it's, it's high, and it's still high. So we have, Mosaic has invested in, I can think of three companies, uh, an urgent care company, which is based in the community, provides really easy access, in and out, similar to what Terry okay. was talking about yes. this morning. Yeah. We have an, made an investment in an urgent care company that pleases the consumer, it's lower cost, and for many providers, you know, if, at first we thought that would be a little challenging for the provider community, we found it not so, that it's just another channel uh, for their patients to use sure. when their office isn't open. Um, Access Point Health is another company, it's a care management company, people can call and talk to, um, you know, health coaches and nurses when they have a, a particularly difficult situation, again, that prevents people from then going and accessing care in places that are inappropriate because they now have that person that they can talk to. Um, and then maybe a third example would be a company we invested in called TouchCare, which is a, a telehealth company. And again, the ease, really thinking about the consumer um, and the payer uh, of, of being able to uh, do a fairly basic needs kind of visit without having to leave work, get in your car, you mm -hmm. know, doing it on the spot. Mm -hmm. and, and this particular model involves having that visit with your own physician. So, you know, those are examples where I think it's, it's sort of a win-win, and, and that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to achieve. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, well, Maureen, as I was preparing for, your, for this interview, I was doing some research on you, and um, you've had a fascinating career. I was hoping that maybe you could um, share some of the personal milestones as you progressed from being a general counsel of a company to an innovation officer. Maybe not a, a natural progression, yeah, but here you are. Exactly. Yes. Well, that is, it's been a really, you know, fun journey. Um, it is an interesting one because you think of someone who's general counsel focused on regulation and compliance uh, as being wired in a certain way, and maybe an, an innovation officer wired very differently. Um, if I had to think of some common threads, I would say um, I love solving problems. And the bigger the problem, you know, the more, the more important the problem, the more I am um, energized by that. So I, I think I'm almost by nature a problem solver. Um, I also am someone that not only isn't, uh, isn't concerned about change, I'm a I actually thrive in, a, in an environment of change. I like change. Um, and I've been in healthcare for over 30 years. So I, I wouldn't say I was passionate about healthcare right out of the gate, um, but it has grown, and I'd say the last, particularly 10 to 15 years, um, there is, again, just so much opportunity to make it better. So if you put together sort of that interest in, in solving big problems, very interested in health policy, um, and then the newest part of my career actually has been working with earlier stage companies, and that has been fascinating. I mean, I just, again, love the energy, love what they're doing. They don't always work. You know, you have to be able to sort of deal with failure. Right. Um, uh, but when they do work, um, it's, it's just, it's amazing. And, and even when, when it doesn't work, you learn from that and you move on. Right. So, um, yeah, I've had a, a ter really a terrific career. I almost look at it as having, you know, three or four different 
Um, I've been with the same company 17 years, but right. I feel like I've been in three or four very different jobs. Well, so. I'm sure that uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina and, and Mosaic is so fortunate in having you in the role that you're in, and what a wonderful time to be in the role that you're in. Yes, it's such it really an exciting is. industry. So, really well, Maureen, thank you so much for joining us Absolutely. here at the Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock. We'll be up again with another interview really soon. Don't, don't miss it. <laughs>